the 17th, no, no, the 18th, 1996. And here we are. Grace is going to talk and talk. It's Elizabeth Kittle speaking to Grace, Grace Bell, who is going to tell us the story of her life. And uh, it's particularly auspicious that we do it now because Grace's birthday is coming up in July. Uh, July the what, Grace? Fourth. Fourth of July, the famous American Independence Day. All the parades for me. Lovely. I don't know, there won't be one in Milton though, will there? No, I mean, in the, you know, the Americans. <laughs> right. I hardly think Milton. No, no parade in Milton. But um, you'll be turning 80. Oh, dear. How do you feel about it? I think if I were a horse, I'd be on my last lap. <laughs> do you? Well, yeah. I don't know how long horses live. Uh -huh. But here you are, looking ever so pretty, and soon to be 80. So Jan thought that it was uh, really a... It, well, she looks forward to your 80th birthday. She's talked to me about it for, oh, for a year or two, frankly. Yeah, she thought it'd be nice for the for Alan and the girls. Yes, for us to have this conversation about your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, there it is, the story in a nutshell. Anybody can refer to it at any time that they want to from here on in. So, where shall we start? Shall we start at the beginning? Okay. You were born where? In Battleford, Saskatchewan. It, just Battle, Battleford or North Battleford, which I well, hear of now? It was a little, I guess, a little village outside of Battleford called Turtleford. Turtleford? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Nobody ever heard tell of it. I wonder if it exists now. I don't know. Have you heard? I, I haven't been back out west since I was 12 years old. Really? Wow. Turtleford, Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. outside of Battleford, mm -hmm. Saskatchewan. I hope all the geography buffs in the family will get out the atlas and uh, have a look at Saskatchewan and kind of try to pinpoint the spot. Eighty years ago, so that was 19 what? 1916. 1916. Was the First World War on then? I don't know. I don't know either. It's It was around... Oh, it would be maybe. I was think so. 1913? I think so. I think it was uh, the time in the world when the First World War was on. Not that that would necessarily involve Saskatchewan too much, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, I think it was. So now, well, tell us what was doing in your family at that point. Well, my mother was 19 and my dad was 34. Wow. And they lived in a little log cabin, I believe, outside of Battleford. My mother uh, <clears throat> was the youngest of a large family, seven girls, I believe, and two boys. And uh, her mother died quite early in life. And my mother, I think she, uh, my grandmother died when my mother was just 12, I think. Really? And she was moved from, you know, sister to brother, sister to brother. Really? Then she, uh, when she got older, she landed out in Saskatchewan. She had a brother there. And uh, then she met my dad. And she was, I guess, 17 or 18. Uh huh. Married him. Now, was he a farmer? Or what was he doing in the log uh, cabin? I really don't know what he did. I see. Because I asked her in later years to tell me all about, you know. Yes. And she never got around to it. She didn't? No. Oh, for goodness sake. Anyway, um, after I was born, when I was two years old, my mother got a job in an office in Regina. Did her she? Her brother got her into it, kind of like a secretary or something. Uh-huh. And uh, she put me in this... Uh, old children's home and paid for my keep. Now was it, would it have been in Saskatchewan? Yes. In Close Virginia. to her job? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. She paid for my keep. And this was when I was two. So you don't Not have... my father. She did? Mm -hmm. 
Do you have any memories of all that? No, oh, no. No memories no. of that at all? No. So how do you actually know that for to be the case then if you don't remember well, yourself? I was told this by uh, a minister and his wife at that time wanted a child. Uh huh. And they came to this large children's home and there was about a hundred children playing around and then here was this little two year old or so standing all over in the corner with the arms folded, surveying oh. all the bunch. Really? So that took their eye, you know, uh -huh. with all the kids. Sure. So uh, they said to the matron, what about that one? And she said, oh, her mother's paying for her keep. She's not to be adopted. She was, she's just, this was just like a boarding place for me. Yes. So they said, May I, uh, could, I'm a minister, he said, and said where it came from. He said, could I take her for a ride? She looks kind of lonesome. Mm -hmm. So being a minister, I guess they thought it would be safe to let me go with them. Yes. So they took me for a ride and then brought me back. Now would that have been in a, a motor car that they yes, had? Yes, and cars were, you know, scarce in those days. Yes. Not many Fords, you know. Uh huh. Not everybody had a car. No. So anyway, um, they came back the next day. Uh huh. And when they came back the next day, I ran towards them. Oh. Well, they really, they said uh, that really got to them, you know. Sure. And they said to the matron, could they contact my mother? Yes. So somehow she arranged for that to happen. And then when they persuaded her they could give me a good home, she consented for them to adopt me. Really? So it was them that told me all of this. Well, your adopted parents. Yes. Now let's get your uh, your natural mom's name straight at this point, at this early point in the story, Grace. Her name was what? Mrs. Eagleson. They were Norwegians. You know, Norwegians always there and named in with S O N. Your natural mom and what was her first name? Uh, her Nona. Nona? Yes. N O N A. Yes. Do you know what her maiden name was? Smith. Nona Smith. Mm -hmm. And she married a Norwegian man named Eagleson. Eli Eagleson. Eli Eagleson from Norway. Well, his folks came from and Norway. My dad was born in Minnesota. My mother was uh, also born in the States. Oh, he really? Was born in Minnesota, too. Not sure. But it was his parents, my grandparents, that were straight from Norway. They didn't speak very good English, I don't think. Okay. And of course, Minnesota is very close to the Saskatchewan border, so mm -hmm. this is uh, territory that's all close to one another. Yes, and uh, ministers in those days were moved every three or four years. Uh -huh. You know, and at that time, uh, my dad, my adopted dad, yes. had a uh, a charge they called him, I don't know if they yes. still do. Yes. In uh, I believe it was Alameda, Saskatchewan. I see. Yes, was that close? Was. Do you think that was close to uh Regina? I don't know. I where never you asked. Where you I, got I to know. then? I see. You know, I'm already understanding something, Grace, as we uh it just even as we're starting here. Mm -hmm. I'm understanding that this that the fact that your natural mother was uh, from originally American mm -hmm. and her husband originally American as well mm -hmm. even though of Minnesota of a Norwegian background That's right. uh, this helps me understand this absolute passion for the United States that exists in your family if there ever was a man <laughs> whom I met <laughs> Who has more passion for the United States? And he always has had. Isn't this incredible? And Cheryl too. Pat Cheryl, she has a thing about the states. Really? Yeah, she really likes the state. Alan always did. So here comes, the, uh, my understanding at least, of some connections along the line here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't have memories then any more of well, Nona, and well, from uh, then. When uh, when my dad was moved, 
Now I'm talking about the only dad I've ever known. This is your adopted dad. Wolfong, yes, mm -hmm. Reverend J.D. Wolfong. When uh, they were moved every three or four years. Mm -hmm. So then when they moved to Manitoba, they were going to, incidentally, they were going to tell me I was adopted when I was 16. Oh. They planned to. And uh, so in a way, after they, they went to... Uh, a lawyer in Regina, I think. It could be Winnipeg. Now, I never got this clear. In a way, I was adopted in either Winnipeg or Regina. Yes. And uh, my mother, in the meantime, had uh, kept wanting me uh, back for weekends and, and so many times that finally they said, would she just, you know, cease and desist and, yes. you know, seeing that the papers had gone through. Uh-huh. So anyway, that was that. They were going to tell me when I was 16. We moved to Manitoba a few years later. Yes. I believe when I was about, well, anyway, we moved to Manitoba and we used to go have a vacation. This time I was uh, 12 years old when we went back to Alameda to oh. visit some friends. Yes. And they, uh, Meanwhile, we had been other places, you know, a mission at Vita, which was a Ukrainian mission, and my dad was the first missionary there and built a, had a hospital built and a mission house, and that was quite an interesting three years there. Yes. All uh, the Ukrainians and, right. and everything. But how I found out I was adopted was uh, when I was 12, we went back to uh, Alameda to see some more friends. Yes. And uh, they went to visit other friends and left me with these people for the afternoon. They thought I'd be bored visiting people I didn't know. And uh, the place where I was, a neighbor came in and they said, uh, see this little girl, this is Reverend Wolfong's daughter, you know, the one they uh, adopted when they lived here? Oh. Well, I was stunned. I didn't say a word. Didn't you? Not a word. And I uh, didn't say anything. So didn't say anything all the way back till we got back to Manitoba. I don't know how long the time was or whether it was at the beginning of the vacation or what it was. Yes. But anyway, we had <clears throat> we had uh, mother sisters living with us like they used to do years ago, you know, members of the family and everything. Yes. And she was a maiden lady, you know, a dear old soul. Uh-huh. <laughs> Aunt who? What was her name? Lila. Aunt Lila? Yes. Uh-huh. And uh, she always, I guess they spoiled me, she'd carry up the lamp for me when I went to bed, so I thought I'll ask Auntie, I called her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can see her yet. I, uh, Wait until she set the lamp down. Good job, I did. And I said, Aunt, Auntie, am I adopted? Well, the poor soul, she would have dropped the lamp. I think she was stunned, you know, just out of the blue. Yes. And then she says, Oh, I'll get your mama to come and explain it to you. Uh. So she said, uh, so she told me, remember, she said, the lady that used to several times take you for the weekend. And I remembered uh, one incident, uh, oh, quite a while previous to that. Uh, one thing I remember, and this was when I was 12 years old, it must have been until I was three or four, that I had gone to this place for the weekend, not knowing sure. where I was going. I thought it was somebody. And this lady was smoking. And I thought, I wonder why my mother lets me go to a place where a lady smokes, you know, like yes. 1920 or something like that. Sure. And uh, that was my mother they let me go to see, to see. Of course. Because their friends probably didn't smoke and you, <laughs> no. you already figured that part out. So you remember that, eh? Yes, and I remember when we lived at, uh, when I was four years old and we lived at Vita, that was, uh, they got, um, carpenters from Winnipeg to build this big hospital mm -hmm. and the, the nurses stayed with us till it was built mm -hmm. and people from all over like we had, dad was the first missionary in this Ukrainian settlement 
Right. And uh, there was a hospital, and we lived above the stable while the house was being built. And uh, then there was a hall, and Dad would show movies to get to the community in. Sure. And uh, then he'd have, I guess, church services, I forget. Yes. So he'd get people. But people would come for miles around. Before the hospital was built, I could remember one little child had walked into a, a bonfire, ashes, you know, and burned her foot. And, uh, oh. and they brought her to mother to fix up, and I have a picture. I have pictures of Vita that are quite interesting. I've seen them. I do remember it, and they, I remember finding it very interesting. Well, uh, the girls one, uh, one year went back to, uh, where did they go, Winnipeg, I think. And I gave them the album, and uh, I guess it was Cheryl's husband, Steve, drove out to Vita Did he? with the album and showed the present uh, people in our house. Oh, you know? how and, grand. Uh, we were the only ones in the village that uh, had electricity. Dad had his own Delco system, I believe it was called. I remember he'd start up the engine that was green. Funny how you remember things when you're four years old, mm -hmm. and until uh, you get the lights going or something. Yep. And uh, we were there for four years. Well, Tommy Grace was your mama nurse. No. No. When you said the little girl with the burns came to her, I wondered if she came particularly. No, that was the only one I guess that they knew of that could do something. Help. I don't know the. Yes. I don't know where the near. I guess people would have to. We were. I think we were 80 miles from Winnipeg. Really. And uh, I don't know how they made out before we moved there. Oh gosh, there's and no before telling. Before the nurses came to live, you know, with to the us hospital. Till the hospital was built. Right. We had two or three, and I remember the Ukrainian women used to come with milk pails like full of wild strawberries and blueberries. Oh. And uh, sell them to mother and dad. I guess for. 50 cents a pail or something. Lovely. Well, tell me now, I just want to go back, if you will, uh, to that memory you have of your auntie calling your mom mm -hmm. to talk to you about oh, yes. that you're adopted. She said that my so, mother, you know, knew they could give her a better home than my mother could, and which they did. They were very good to me. Yes. So do you remember how you felt about that at the time, Grace? You were stunned at first I, oh and yes, quiet? Oh, yes. After we got home, and, and I remember looking in the mirror. I don't know why. Wondering if I had changed looks or something, I guess. And then I never thought anymore, but really. Really. And uh, the years went by, and uh, they were very good to me. Maybe they spoiled me. I don't know. I never had to do anything much. Really? <laughs> Just be a precious little girl. Yeah, well, they were very good to me. do okay. you remember at any stage thereafter wondering about the woman who smoked, who was your mom? Yeah, I saw it at times, but you know, the years went by and I was quite content and happy and everything. Yes. And uh, then after I had the three, um, my mother had a couple of marriages in between, divorced my dad and everything. And uh, then she was uh, married to a, a man and told him, Walter Pope his name was, this was in California. Sorry, now what was his last name? Pope, Walter Pope. P-O-P-E. Mm -hmm. Well now there's another interesting connection. How does Al get his nickname? He just gave himself that name. Do you think he did? Because gave I named Alan when he was born. I named him Alan Wilfong Bell. Yes. Wilfong was from my adopted parents. Yes. And uh, he gave himself the name of Pope. Which was his, his grandmother's yeah. married name. Well, yes, at Pope. the time. Yes, he went down. He hitchhiked down a time or yes. two even. When, yes. when I think of him hitching, hitchhiking all the way to California. But anyway, um, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, such yes. an interesting yes. story. Uh, Walter Pope, he said to my mother, well, do you want to go? He said, 
my mother told me this. He said, well, your daughter's married now. Just out of the top of his head. How did he know that, Grace? He didn't. He just said I that. See. She told me. She's married and she has three children. Huh? Anyway, he said, now every minister out west, uh, I guess they still have here, they have a yearbook. Yes. And uh, their names are all in it. I don't know if this is in Ontario or not. Well, I guess it'd have to be. Uh, there's a yearbook that traces all their moves and everything. Sure. Well, somehow Walter Pope said we can find out, you know, where they live now. So they wrote my dad. I was married and had uh, three kids. And uh, they wrote, they found out in somebody's yearbook, I guess, yes. that my dad and, and uh, mother lived in Preston and wrote them. They'd moved to Preston, Ontario by this time. Yes. Because you were married in Ontario, of well, course. that's where dad, um, yes, that's where dad uh, retired in Pre Preston. Yes. He had uh, a charge at, uh, down near Lake Erie at uh, Victoria. I see. In uh, a little place called Walsh. Uh-huh. And uh, so in a way he found out uh, their address in Preston and asked them about me and where I lived. Yes. And so they gave them my address and I'll never forget when I first heard from my mother. I was in my 20s. The kids all had the mumps and so did I. Oh no. And uh, it was in February. And uh, isn't it funny how you remember little things yes. like that? And I got this letter, and they said, you know, that my folks had given them the address, and would I send a picture? So I guess I did. Oh, good. And then they came to see us the next summer. We had moved to another house in Mount Forest. They came to see us, not saying that they were coming. Oh, really? Because I probably... Well, you know, would be all in a fit wondering, you know, how to, but I didn't know they were coming. And uh, one Sunday, I'll never forget, we we're all sitting around, Sunday afternoon, and a car pulled up with a little, little uh, trailer behind it. Oh. And uh, I think it was Neil. Neil was Don's brother. He was boarding with us, or Art, either one of them looked out and said, there's your mother, because she looked a lot like me. Really? They all knew about this mother oh, of yours? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. There's your mother. Mm -hmm. And how yes. did you feel? Very awkward. Very awkward. I don't awkward. remember too much about that, strangely enough. Everybody was looking at everybody else, and they had brought presents, you know, for all of us and everything. I don't remember too much about that. And then they came... Uh, again the next year or two. Really? I don't remember much of the, about the visit. No. And then... Just awkward. Do you remember that feeling? Yes, kind of awkward not knowing what to say. Hey, Grace, what about... I didn't ask you how you felt if you remember that February when you had the mumps, when you got that letter from her. Kind of excited. Did you? Uh-huh. Yes, I was. Uh-huh. Yes, I uh, really... Uh, wrote right back and sent a picture. Good. Uh-huh. Good. Yes, I really uh, Had you realized, when you started to, when you, when you recognized that you felt excited, had you realized then or since that you had uh, kind of longed for, for this kind of a reunion at all? Or were you conscious of that at all? No. No. They were so good to me and, uh, and, uh, I'm so glad I had that experience mm -hmm. being brought up in a house in a home like that. Yes. Well, tell me, Grace. Um, I suppose there was church every Sunday, twice or three times. Yes, there was two or three times a Sunday, and uh, and various Mother other. Mother gave me music lessons. You know, we had a piano at home, just play uh, hymns on Sunday. You know, none of these. Uh, you know. No other music? No. Did you get to be a, quite a, a pianist, Grace? No. No? No, but I got to read music. And when I went to high school in Sim Simcoe, I'd uh, 
you, you took a bus. Uh, I don't know how many miles Victoria is from Simcoe, just enough to take a bus, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mother would give me money every day for uh, uh, my lunch and money to get a, a drink with my lunch. Mm -hmm. You didn't have thermoses then or something. And uh, three or four of us girls used to go to the restaurant and I'd eat my lunch there, I wouldn't get a drink. But I saved my money to the end of the week, I guess it was five or ten cents a day, and get a sheet of music. Really? Like I remember I got Sunny Boy, that'll date me, and Ramona. Really? You know. And, and then you took it home and played it. Really? And I guess they laughed about it, they didn't care. Good. And, uh, Do you think that Karen picked up her her love of music f from you at all? Well, it's hard to say. Um, I'm glad everybody likes reading. They always supplied me, uh, my parents always supplied me with books and I loved reading. Did you? And books for, you know, amongst other things, uh, for Christmas and books for my birthday. and. I just loved reading and still do, and I feel sorry for anybody that doesn't. It's no. a great pastime. Absolutely. And you pass that on to your girls? Well, they love reading too. Yes. And that's good. Good. Is anybody else in uh, of the children or grandchildren musical? Anybody else play the piano or sing? Well, you know, years ago, I shouldn't say most little girls, you know, that was the thing to do. I see. To play the piano, I think. Uh huh. You know, I don't know if they do so much now. But they did no, then. I think Karen's the only one that's taken lessons. Isn't that interesting? I, uh, well, I, uh, June and Pat and Mount Forest, I just remembered I had them take a few lessons, but they didn't carry it on or wanted to quit or something. Nothing yes. came of it, really. I see. Interesting. They didn't keep it up. You never know with kids, do you? No. You no. Know, they weren't interested. Though. Yeah. Okay with me. So, but, uh, uh, you got over this awkwardness, I guess, mm -hmm. about yeah. meeting Nona. Mm -hmm. So, what did you call her from there on in? Did you call her mother, or did you call her Nona, or what did you call her? I think I said mom whenever I'd see her, which wasn't very often, you know. Uh huh. I I remember. Uh, uh, my mother sending me a ticket to fly down there. She asked me if she sent me a ticket, would I come down for, I think I was down for a month when uh, Pat was about, oh, eight or nine, and really? three years between each. Yeah, she'd be about eight or nine, and, and the Don was, you know, he'd be home every night, and. Uh -huh. And they were all going to school, and so I went down and uh, met my aunts and... Oh, her and sisters were living there then mm -hmm. too? Good? Yes. Good. So w that would be a bit of a thrill? Yes, it was. It was, uh, it was nice. Yes, I, in California, you know, I mean, that was really something. Palm trees a whole bit. <laughs> Imagine! Yes. Oh, from it's Mount Forest, Mount Forest. Absolutely, I bet you were the only woman from Mount Forest who spent a month in I California. I was too. Wow. Yes, that was nice. So I remember Don. The first time I went down, Don gave me uh, thirty-five dollars to spend. Oh. And I remember thinking since I bet I was the only one on the plane <laughs> with thirty-five dollars in my purse. Imagine. But, yeah, of course, it went further than I got. To for the kids. Sure. Well, gosh, you were an emancipated woman. It wasn't that. And, and yeah. that's many, many years ago. Yes, it is. Isn't uh -huh. it? Oh, gosh. So she was living around Los Angeles then. Mm -hmm. So how, what about the uh, Reverend and his wife, your, your adopted parents? Well. Uh, when did they die? Well, first Aunt Lila died. Ah. Uh. I don't know what year it was. She was, I think, 70. And she had pneumonia, and then mother passed away. I remember taking a train from Mount Forest to uh, Preston, and uh, then dad a few years later. They're all buried at Zion. 
at one of the churches where he preached over next to Preston. I see. On the outside of Preston. I see. Yeah. Good. But you were on your own by then. You had your own family. family. Mm -hmm. Now what about your husband? Where did you meet him? I met him at a young people's meeting. Really? At Cedarville. We lived at Con. Dad had the charge. Cedarville and Con just a couple of miles apart. At least. I met him at a young people's meeting. Now, is Cedar, uh, Con and Cedarville, they're near Preston? Oh, no. This no, is up near Mount Forest? There, yes. Yes. Okay. You know, Preston's next to Gulf there. I get it. So you're, you're uh, up in his territory, up in the Bell family farm territory. Well, uh, Dad was moved to Con. Yes. From uh, from Victoria. Yes. When I was, let's see, how old was I? I was fifteen, I guess it was. Uh -huh. Fifteen. And we moved to Con. Yeah. And Dad preached at Con in Cedarville, and the Bells had a farm at Cedarville. Yes. Yes, that's the Bell Farm. Mm -hmm. And so there you were, you met at the Young People's? Yes. And uh, were you courting one another very no, long? No, I wasn't too impressed. He had kind of <laughs> long hair and, and uh, I was, you know, just, I don't know. I went out with a couple of ones at Con, just casual to a show or something. And and uh, then I met him at the, but that was the first time I met him was at the Young People's Thing. Yes. And then he used to belong to um, to um, Trio. Oh. And they were very good singers. I sure wish I had a tape of that. They'd be like, something like the Everly Brothers, you know, but it was Don and two others, Lloyd Hockridge and uh, Jim Fierce. Really? And they all sang in a different, you know, alto and, yes. and uh, soprano, and, and uh, the Jim Fierce played the uh, guitar, and they were very good. They would be asked to every uh, garden party and follow supper around, every little place around. Wow. So then things began to get better, and I thought, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> He saw right long hair. No, it wasn't, <laughs> but it was long for those days, you know. Yes. And uh, then I guess seeing how popular they were and everything, and then I'd get to all these dues. And, uh, a social life, all a of a social sudden. social life, yeah. And uh, the Bells were a good family, well-respected farmers. And, sure. And uh, so long, uh, and Grandma person and she had the five boys and one girl and the only girl died at age 15. Really? She had inward goiter I think it was. Oh. So anyway we uh, got married. Dad married us in really? 1934. Oh my goodness. At, at the parsonage where we lived. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh my. And, uh, on our honeymoon. So now how old were you, Grace, when you I were married? I was 18. You were 18. You were finished school by then? Yes. Now had you worked at all? No. No? Mother wanted me to. I went to high school just for a year. Yes? And I hated it. Did you? Mother had planned. She had big plans for me. To do so what? She, she wanted me to go to uh, Alma College. College. Yes, down in no St. Thomas. Way, uh, yes, I begged and pleaded. I'd wash their floors, which I never had to do. I'd do anything if they wouldn't send me. Oh, I, so I just stayed at home. And Isn't that didn't. interesting? I wonder why you were so reluctant to go down there. Do you have a, re a sense for the reason I just why? Didn't, I didn't like school. Okay. But now I realize how foolish I was, but at that age, you know, I so anyway, I, well, uh, Jim, let me suggest something that occurs to me. Actually, there are two things I want to suggest at this point. Little connections that I've made as we've gone along, Grace. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? I would suggest that one of the reasons you mightn't have wanted to have gone away was because uh, uh, maybe some on a conscious, but more on an unconscious level, you had the memories of having been 
departed already mm -hmm. from your natural mom as a little wee one and the delicate little being that you were couldn't stand the thought or the pain of the separation. I don't know. I just didn't want to go. I said, yeah. oh, I'll do anything. Yeah. And I never had to do anything around the house. <laughs> I used to ask, could I iron Dad's handkerchiefs? Yes. They let me do that, you know. I see. And that was all. Oh, I must tell you something <laughs> funny. Um, Don, as I say, went up on the stage, you know, at all these fall suppers, garden parties yes. and everything, and I, I never knew how to iron or anything. So before one concert, Don asked me, handed me his pants, would I press his pants for him? Well, I'd never pressed pants in my life, but I got out the ironing board and the steam cloth, and I pressed them sideways. I pressed them oh, this way. Oh, Grace! Instead that way. Ah! <laughs> he never said anything. He just went and bored his brothers and him having to go up on the stage. And I uh, didn't live that down for a long, long time. <laughs> pressed them sideways. Oh, dear. I never had to wash and dry dishes. I would dry the dishes. Never had to do both. I, really? I tell you, I was spoiled. You, you know? didn't have a lot of hard work to do, but I can <laughs> no. understand that they were so thrilled to have you that it just... Well, I guess they thought, you know, my yeah. daughter doesn't have to do. Yeah. I guess that's why I still don't like doing housework. I never had to do it. <laughs> I can't say I blame you, Grace. <laughs> Let me share the one other thing that occurred to me as you talked about. This is way back to the very start. Mm -hmm. The memory uh, of, oh no, they told you about this uh, when you were at the children's home. A little two-year-old mm -hmm. and, they, and they took you out for the ride and then mm -hmm. they came back the next door and you ran over to them. Yes. I had the, I had the distinct sense that uh, that like you really recognized them on a level that they you you really uh, took to them. yeah uh, but more than just took to them you'd had a lovely day with them in their car the day mm -hmm. before but that in some sense you intuitively understood that they were your saviors at this at the time so to speak they'd call it bonding today wouldn't they <laughs> could do Maybe. yeah you were connected, that's for yeah. sure, eh? Yeah. And you just ran over. No wonder their hearts melted. And I just, like, picked me up, you know? Yeah. So, uh, they originally had their mind set on a boy. Did they? But wasn't it funny that they, because I'm sure if I'd been with all the other kids, they wouldn't have picked out me. But just the fact that I was all alone in the corner surveying all the others with my arms folded, and, you know, a little two-year-old, yeah. The arms folded would look kind of <laughs> strange, so they picked me out. Wow, so very course, interesting story. Yes. Very so, uh, interesting. Like I say they were good to me, and I'm glad that they brought me up. Well, I thought they, you know, when I got older, I thought they were too strict, you know, sometimes. But Dad always said they wouldn't let me go to a, a school dance or something. He always would make up for it by taking me to a show or really? something. I and, see. Uh, never wanted me to be disappointed, and I often say to the kids, you know, once I got married and you are out in the cold, cruel world, you have yes. to get used to disappointments and everything. And yes. Some way or another, but uh, they were, uh, you know, they were very good to me. And, yes, and, indeed. Uh, for a long time, I could never stand hearing. Um, a uh, couple of hymns beyond the sunset and ivory palaces because I, uh, I went, I guess it was a week before Mother died uh, in Preston that I uh, went down and stayed. And uh, she'd get me to play on the piano over and over again, those two hymns. Really? I know after she passed away for years, I couldn't stand to hear those being played there on the radio or anything. Because it hurt you, it reminded oh, yes. you of those yeah. sad moments, the moments of parting in a way. Just like, you know, when I hear the Stotlers or anything, that really gets to me because Don was a great one for music. Yes. You know, well, singing, and then he'd always get the, he liked his gospel Did he? songs. And Love yet him. he liked other ones too. Uh -huh. But he was a very good singer. God, had Karen started to sing before he died? 
Did he ever get to hear Karen sing? I don't, I don't know that he did. I don't, I think, don't think so. I think she was... She, did you tell me it's five years ago that he three. died? Three. 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 Well, she was just getting started then, you know that? Mm -hmm. So it's possible that he did. Wouldn't his heart be war warmed to uh, hear her sing now? Yeah. Wow, I heard her on Sunday, you know, over at Hugh Foster Hall. Mm -hmm. Oh, ever, ever, ever so pretty. Yes, yeah, she has a sweet voice. Pretty, pretty, lovely. Yeah, oh, she's wow. Well, now I tell you, Grace, I want to ask you about this, what you have of your memories about this. Um, it has to do with your spiritual connection and with such a religious family mm -hmm. and so much uh, church and Christian teaching experience and prayer probably. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering as you grew, if you had, what was your own sense of, of spirituality? What was your own uh, sense of your connection? Did you feel yourself uh, quite a loving Christian girl, or what do you remember about that? Well, I always, uh, I guess I just took my uh, upbringing for granted, you know. Just, uh -huh. uh, yes, I'm glad of it, because I do believe in prayer, certainly. I don't know how anybody couldn't. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you had such a strong grounding, didn't you? That's what I mean. And as you yes. grow older, you're more aware of, you know. Yes, of the importance. But you, mm -hmm. you were busy doing it without being quite aware. It was just part and parcel of your yeah. way of life, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. Yes, it really was. So you had a wonderful, wonderful foundation mm -hmm. in that respect. Yes. Good. Yes, it, uh, Good. Did you, we talked before we got on the tape here about my metaphysical experience. That was so interesting. The angel. What about you? Did you have as a girl anything uh, of that nature? No, I didn't. And I do wish that, uh, that Dad was alive now so I could ask him about, uh, you know, things like seeing Don and everything, to ask him. I told you about his young brother. Yes. You know, when he was dying yes. many, many years ago, and they all, they saw him looking towards the corner. He was only four years old, and uh, they asked him what he was looking at, and he said, a beautiful man, and that was many years ago. Before. And you know, yes. a four-year-old tells the truth. They don't fantasize. Do yes, they? absolutely. So uh, I wish Dad were alive today so I could ask him, you know, had he... Uh, experienced anything in that line. Uh -huh. He had hundreds of books and I used to have the one thing I had to do was dust. Oh. Didn't like that too well but anyway he had <laughs> hundreds of books in his study and one uh, book that uh, was on metaphysics. Really? I never opened it but I didn't know what me metaphysics were but now I believe isn't it something in the psychic area? Metaphysics, yes, simply so, means more than the physical. So he must have uh, had kind of, but I never heard him say anything about, uh, yes. you know, anything in that area. Interesting, though, you know, because not all Christian ministers were would have been open for that, would have even had such a kind of a book. Well, I remember that was one book he had. Yes. And I wondered what that was, and then I didn't open it up or anything. I guess the name just... Yes, <laughs> yes. I just went to... Uh-huh. But uh, we always had lots of books in the house. And so you guys got married. You were young, and there you were with a social life yes. and with a famous singer for a husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quite and in the uh, limelight. And... Uh, Oh, I often uh, tell the kids about how when we lived at uh, Victoria before we moved to Con, uh, I used to ask the neighbors if I could take out their little kids on Saturdays as a favor to me. Never expected to get paid for it. I wasn't, you know, just yes. would they let me take their children out. Yes. So when I had my own, I'm telling you. You were one happy lady. Yes. June was born, let's see, we're married in 34, June was born in 36, 
God. And Alan in 39 and Pat in 42. Wow. Three years between each. There and you were. I was saying, I thought I had it made when I had my own. <laughs> But you know what? That was a lot of work, and you hadn't been accustomed to. I didn't know a thing about babies. I'd never held one. But Grandma Bell next door, the next farm to us. Good. She, um, you know, I could, and I got all the government books that were available. Good. Read up on them. Good. <laughs> and when June was 19 months old, she won the first prize in a baby show in Mount Forest. No kidding. And, oh uh, wow. Yeah, there it was must... about 30, 35. Babies. And, uh, well, I wish you had her picture at this point. We could show the picture on I the... I have a picture, uh, June has it, of her it. after that was uh, at 19 months. Uh, yes. But June has it. She got it enlarged. And well, we'll let, ev enlarged. We'll let it, anybody who's watching this and wants to see June, the baby yeah. contest yeah. winner, search out the picture mm -hmm. and put it together. Isn't that sweet? Oh yes. my, that's lovely. Now then, you also told me though that you did have a baby who died. Yes, a boy. And when was he? Was he? I was after? 39 years old. The kids were grown up then. I see. And we had moved to uh, Preston. I see. And uh, Dad lived with us because her mother had died previous to that. And, I see. Uh, he lived with us, and it was after he died that it was. Uh, um, in the uh, seventh month, I think. Oh, I yeah, see. I was born. Dead. Ah. I was like I say, thirty-nine. Uh huh. And how was that? Was that a particularly sad time oh, for I you? I remember, you know, being in, uh, in the hospital and you know, I yes, hear the other babies crying and everything, and uh -huh. say I was thirty-nine, and I remember. Crying quite a bit, but then you know, time went by, and, sure. and had to be about ten or so. And, you know, the kids were grown up. And well, they were on their way. Then. Yes. So that was so a anyway. sad time. But uh, that's what I was telling you about uh, Pat sending to Ronald Hearn. He's a psychic. Yes. And he was describing Don and saying he was so surprised to see his son, you know. And that was that little baby. That was the one. You, did you ever give him a name? I gave him a name called John. John. Just John. Ah. Uh, I uh, never saw him. No, oh, you he didn't? asked me if I wanted to, and I said no. Ah. Oh, so I remember Don uh, saying that he was the only one at the cemetery, you know, with just this little casket and a minister. Oh, really? Imagine. But a person goes through things. Uh, yes. June and her first husband divorced, and we raised Bill, our grandson that they had. That was June's son? Yes. Yes, he and joined he your family? he was killed after he was married. He was killed a few years ago. Oh. And that was a shock. And another sad time. Yes, and then the next shock I got was when they told me I had cancer. <laughs> I was stunned. Oh, uh, I bet you were. Yeah. And that's not that very long ago, is it? It's eight years. Doesn't time go fast? Oh wow. Eight years ago, yeah. Eight years. Yeah. My goodness. And then the next shock I got was with Don, you know. That was on a well, the girls come over every Saturday. And Don was the kind that never let on if he didn't feel well. Mhm. Mm but he didn't uh, seem to feel too well that day. June ha was on the night shift. So she would say during the day, now before we go home, do you want to take you up to the hospital? And he said, no, I'll be all right. Uh-huh. He was real good stuff, you know, I mean, you know, if he had a pain or anything, he would never let on, but you could just tell by his expression. Yes. If he did or not. 
So the girls went home and then he got quite sick, had a stomach after they went. Yes, I, Alan and Jan were away, weren't they? Yes, they were at Palm Springs. Yes. So in a way, I, uh, and he never w ever wanted to go to the hospital because he, well, he just didn't like hospitals. So in a way, I said, will you let me take you to the hospital? I'll call a taxi. So he said he'd go. So uh, he had been several times before. He had, uh, you know, cirrhosis once and uh, congestive heart failure another time. Really? So I uh, just thought this was another time, you know. Sure. Took us pajamas and stuff. So in a way, uh, this was on the Saturday. Yes. Friday, he had taken me shopping, picked up Alan's mail and everything. And Imagine. Saturday, he went to the hospital. Wow. Well, in a way, Sunday, well, he was taken to emergency and they kept giving him morphine and then they said, oh, we better take him up to intensive care. So they ran along with the stretcher and Ray ran along with them. And he had been in intensive care once before previously and uh, after being in the hospital for a couple of days and, and once they uh, called Alan's number because they couldn't get me at home because that was a Saturday and we had gone to the mall and yes. Alan went looking to the mall on a Saturday, found us finally and went up there. But he came out of there all right, you know, mm -hmm. he was very strong. So in a way on the Sunday, he went unconscious. My goodness. So um, the nurses had me go back and forth to the little room and then I'd go in and see Don and back to the little room. And I didn't know he was unconscious. I just thought he was sleeping. So I went back to the little room. Next thing I knew, Dr. Bradley came just to the doorway and said, I'll give your husband half an hour, call the family, and then he disappeared. Oh, goodness. Just like that. Oh, and you were there alone? Yes. Oh, great. But right at his heels came a nurse. Good. And uh, and she, uh, I couldn't remember anybody's number. No. You know, June or Pat. Too shocked. But shot. I knew June would be at the fire station. Uh huh. So the nurse got through to either June or Pat, I don't know. And uh, they came right over. Well, then Alan. They were out, you know. Yes. It all seems kind of like a, a blur. Um, I remember them coming home and trying to get the motel. Alan always leaves a number and where they're staying. Yes. So uh, finally, I guess it was Monday when they got through to them. So that was from Saturday to Monday. They turned up again on about the Tuesday, didn't they? They came right away. They came right away. No, they came. They came Monday. Right then? Yeah. They got a flight somehow. Yeah. That was the uh, 22nd of March, and then my very best friend passed away in May. Oh, yes. That was a great period of loss yeah. for you. Well, so how many days did your husband live then? Just a day or two after Al and Jan got home? No, he uh, he was unconscious when they came straight to the hospital. Uh -huh. He never uh, woke up, and uh, and that was the Monday because I I was sitting by him, and uh, I remember the nurse touched my shoulder, and and she said he's gone, Mrs. Bell, and I said no, he isn't, because I could see a uh, I was looking at the wrong line, you know. I see. Ah, oh, what a sad moment for you. But he always said that he wanted to go quick like his father. His father had, had a heart attack and just, you know, just dropped in the really? field or something. And so, he, yeah. And Dave Pirro came the night before the funeral. And 
so nice, isn't he? Oh, lovely. You know, talk so nice. And Absolutely. So what, in fact, caused his death, Grace? Oh, they asked if they could do a, how do you pronounce that? Like an Auto air, autopsy? Yeah, autopsy, and I said, certainly. It was a ruptured uh, esophagus. Esophagus. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, well, well. Oh, dear. And so then, lo and behold, you've so gotten used to... So I had him cremated on the old farm, on the Bell Farm, where he was born. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't remember that detail. Yes. No, I think I do, that you remind mm -hmm. me. I think I do. Yes, on the old farm back in the maple bush. So you've been getting used to living on your own ever since, which mm -hmm. is quite a hard thing to do, isn't it? Well, if it wasn't for the family, oh, I don't know. They're wonderful. I mean, they're all, Alan comes in every morning, and, and the girls come in, and, and you know, I mean, I don't know what I do without them. They're all so good to me. Good. Yeah. Well, you know what? And the grandchildren, you know, they're all a great bunch. They are. Mm -hmm. They are. It's true. And I often say, you know, uh, they're all to be proud of because they're all. It's not because of my grandchildren or anything. There's not a black sheep in the bunch. They're all doing you know, nicely. All good kids. Indeed. Very nice. And Indeed. We're all quite close, you know. Yeah. Because I feel their age when I'm talking to them. Do you? <laughs> yes, oh. I do. Well, that's something about you, though. I've always thought that. You're very youthful. Well, I can't believe I'm the age I am. I Imagine honestly can't. Oh. That you're turning 80. Isn't oh, that amazing? I'm not as old. Ah! <laughs> well, you but know what? You know, we have lots of laughs. Everybody seems to have a sense of humor. I think I used to have not so much for a long time now. But we have lots of laughs, and they say that helps. Indeed. Because, uh, well, I say it's mostly at my expense, because I get myself in the darndest situations. <laughs> just uh, just the other day, of course, Alan picks up things so quick that I say, and then it's so embarrassing. Because just the other day, I'd written to a cousin. Well, that's another thing. Uh, you, uh, just before my cancer operation, I had wondered if there was any of the Eaglesons left, yes. you know, on my father's side out west. Yes. And this is, you know, I mean, years and years gone by, and they could be all scattered. They were uh, right. quite a large family. So I took the notion to write to the post office, there's quite a few Eagleson boys, and say, was there any um, Eagleson relatives in that vicinity. I wrote to the um, Turtleford Turtleford uh, post office. Yes. And here there was a woman that knew one of the ones that knew the Eaglesons. Wow. So, and all these years later. Wonderful. So, she wrote me and I didn't get the letter till I was in the hospital and had my cancer operation telling me where the surviving members and giving me all their addresses. She lives in Saskatchewan and we yes. send a Christmas card every Christmas. Wow. Like exchange them. Yes. So in a way there's a, a, a cousin of mine. Her father was my dad's uh, brother. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm not very good at the letter writing. I, you know, never think of what to say or anything, but I, I had heard we had exchanged letters at Christmas, so I, I wrote her the other day and told her I was sorry that I hadn't written her because she had wrote me quite a letter at Christmas time. Yes. And telling me about, now she lives in Oregon, telling me oh. about land they were interested in Arizona. Really? And waiting and waiting to get it getting water tested or some darn thing. And yes. I was telling Alan that I finally got writing her. This was just the other day. And I said, I asked her if she bought the, and I said to Alan, plot yet? And he picked right up on and he said, I hope you didn't say plot. And then I began thinking, did I? Instead of lot. <laughs> did you get your, the plot your yet? Your plot. And I had the envelope ready to post, and I'll see yeah. so I posted it anyway. So, of course, everybody laughed, and I said, now, don't go telling all your friends. 
which he does when I make a mistake, and of course I was a laugh. <laughs> well, that's good, and though. I'm always doing things like that, and then we laugh about it, and uh, you know, and I can see the fun in it. Oh, there's so many times I've made them laugh. Good. Well, just, that's terrific. Just innocently, you know, not meaning to, not no. telling a joke, or just being yeah. myself. <laughs> just being you. Yeah. Isn't that terrific? Well, he has a great sense of humor, too, so that's something that runs in the family, too, besides yes. the music. Yes. You know what I want to tell you as we're talking? I'm aware of how beautiful your hands are. Oh, they used to be. I'm so ashamed of them now. They, I used to be proud of my hands because, you see, I never had to do anything, and they were white and smooth. Uh -huh. But now they're all veiny and wrinkled and awful. The girls gave me this... Uh, family ring. Really? Now uh, what, uh, let's see. I forget see. what occasion it was. I really do. It was just about last year. I'm going to try to do a zoom. Oh, I'm zooming the wrong way. Here I come. I'm zooming in to get a picture of this family ring. Oh. Tell me more about it. Describe it so I can show well, it. it's everybody's birthday. Oh, right. I don't know my stones except uh, Mine's the ruby, because that's July, you see. Yes. And that one's is April, whichever one. That's April a diamond. Is, is there a diamond that? in there? Yes, there. Uh-huh, and what about Pat? And uh, Pat's is in January. I don't know what that is. January the 8th, and June's is October the 4th. What have you got left? After the ruby and the diamond, what else is there there? Well, Dawn's was in December. And what that's is it? The blue one, I guess. Huh. Sapphire, I guess Lovely. that one. Lovely. That was one thing I didn't, you know, expect. Or Beautiful surprise. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, you think your hands were beautiful when you were young because you didn't work. You know, they weren't uh, all tired out hands. But as you've talked here and I've uh, been here with you like this, I've noticed that I think your hands are gorgeous. And I love the way you maneuver, you move your hands as you speak and illustrate. Oh, I didn't think I did, and here I make fun of an aunt of mine that really gestured. I didn't realize that I did, and uh, I said to my mother, it was so funny, uh, and isn't it funny now, when June was born, I named her June, not knowing I had an Aunt June. Oh, wow. And my mother and Aunt June were very close, and they phoned each other every day, even though they lived in the same town practically, but neither one drove, so they'd phone each other, Yes. you know? And uh, I, uh, once when I was down there visiting Aunt June, I said to my mother, she gestures just like a movie star, really gestures. Really? And she used to smoke, and she she was a dainty little thing, and she'd smoke, you know, and and so dainty and gesture and my mother says oh she just puts that on in front of people but i i didn't know that i gesture i well i don't know by comparison with her not knowing her but i've enjoyed kind of studying your hands and oh, watching them they're lovely maybe i just didn't know what to do with them no they're they're just moving around in a natural way as you talk to illustrate this and that, you're talking with your hands in another in another way of saying it. Oh, it used to be nice, but anyway, it's uh, you know. There are your hands. Yeah. There are your hands, for better or worse. <laughs> Tell me this: uh, your mother, your mum, mother in California, then. Did you visit her very often? Not very often, no. Don and I drove down a few times. Did you? Well, like a few, maybe three times. Uh huh. And I went down several times um, by plane. Good. I went down once with Alan when my mother's husband died, the one after Walter Pope. Yes. Well, that's another thing that Alan thinks is hilarious. Now, I shouldn't <laughs> say uh, the funeral. But here's another thing I did, and he loves telling people this too. Anyway, we, Alan had to arrange everything for Martin's funeral. And you know how nice Alan dresses all yeah. the time. So anyway, I was trying to be helpful. Whenever I try to be helpful, I do something, I goof. 
So anyway, I said I was trying to be helpful, and Alan had to take uh, Martin's clothes to the funeral home. So Alan said, I need a jacket. So I went looking through, you know, the men's clothes like, and, and Alan had hung his jacket up, and <laughs> it was the nicest one there was. Of course. So I said, oh, here's a good one, Alan. Alan says, it's mine. <laughs> Everybody, I try, we tried to bury Martin and Alan's children. Dress him up and, oh, that's funny. Uh -huh. well, that is funny. That's just that. another thing I did. Yeah, I see. So yeah. eventually, your mom lived to a very old age, didn't she? She was uh, 89. 89. Mm -hmm. And she was, did she lived there she at? She cancer. Did she? Mm -hmm. Oh dear, where was her cancer? She had cancer of the bladder. Did she? Mm -hmm. Ah, poor thing. Now, did she stay in her mobile home right up till the end of her life? Yes. Right till the very end? Mm -hmm. Good. She was in the hospital, but then Martin took her home. She wanted to go home mm -hmm. to the mobile. And she died at home? Yes, he was going to, I believe, take her to the nursing home. Just, uh, you know, Shortly. Yes, because I guess she was getting to be hard to look after. Yes. You know, and, and it's kind of helpless. I don't know if they have VON down there or not. I hope they had something. Mm -hmm. I hope they did. Well, I'm glad she died and spared herself that. Yeah. Poor thing. And 89. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not that long ago. How long ago was that? I forget. Do you know? I forget what year it was. It was before your husband died. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I don't remember when either. Funny I how. I have it written down somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I should remember when my mother died, but I don't. Oh well, heavens, there's plenty been doing. Yeah. In the family, there's no yeah. doubt about that. There's something going on. So now, Grace, what I was going to say along there somewhere, in response to you saying how. What, how lovely the kids are and how, how pleased you are with your grandchildren, not a black sheep amongst them. That's right, I have eight grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. Wow, imagine. Mm -hmm. But what I wanted to say about that is, I know this from Jan, and from observing for myself, that, um, you see, Children who are beautifully parented, who are beautifully mothered, have that edge and have a wonderful example and a wonderful model on uh, a good foundation and then return it, so yes. to speak, to yeah. you and the world. So, in fact, where I'm giving a lot of the credit is to you. Well, uh, that's a nice thing to say, which reminds me of something my granddaughter told me when she told me, now, this is June's old uh, daughter. Hey, Grace, let's hold a minute while the train goes by, okay? Can you shut that off? Now? Back again, the train's passed. Your granddaughter phoned. Yeah, she phoned uh, the other Sunday, and uh, I was telling her, you know, what a good mother she is. and. Uh, I said, and your mother is, you know, really good to you and everything, you know, mm -hmm. everything. and uh, Marilyn says, well, it all stems back to you, Grandma, and I thought that was so precious, you know, I mean, Aww. all our kids or grandchildren are good to me and, you know, close to me, and that's the way I like it. I like our friends, you know, Marilyn's best friend, she calls me Grandma, good. Lorraine. And, you okay. know, and Pat's best friend, you know, she says she feels like a member of the family, and I like that. I like okay. uh, like them to know that they can bring their friends here and they'll know they'll be welcome. And Grandma Bell was like that. Okay. The kids used to take their friends out to the farm, and she always made them welcome, and I think that's nice, because I like young people. I think it'd be depressing to have to be at the manner. It's a good job there's places like that. But yes. I like being around young people. And sure. It keeps you young. I think it does, yes. Yeah. 
Cause Absolutely. Because I look at others my age and I thought, oh, good gosh. You know, I mean, yeah. I'm, they'll look at me and think the same thing probably. Oh, <laughs> you know? I doubt it. But, uh, I know, doubt it. Uh, my mom and I are talking about the fact now, as she's almost 82, we're talking about the fact that uh, <laughs> she and one of her friends have decided there are young, old, and there are old, old. Oh, yeah. And so I'll put you in the category of the young, old. <laughs> and of course they think they are in the young, old category too, which I think they are. The kids I, laugh when I say I'm having the other old biddies for euchre, you know, we're all about the same age. You play, oh, you have a group that you play euchre yes, with? Yes, only uh, uh, we quit for the summer and I'm kind of glad because I like to watch the baseball. The baseball game. Yeah. You told me that. You love mm -hmm. the big, do you have a favorite team? Blue Jays. Oh, you love the Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. Do you ever go down to a game, Grace? I had a chance. Uh, Jen, uh, I mean Angie and Al asked me to go once with them mm -hmm. and I thought I'd rather see it at home. Mm -hmm. I should have gone to see the Sky Dome, of course it'll always be there. But, uh, and then Pat's, uh, I think the teachers and Pat or the secretary, or somebody from their school one year went. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pat asked me if I wanted to go, but I said, no, I no. didn't think I would. No. So, uh, but you can I enjoy guess it. it's really something to see. But I'm glad I uh, like the baseball because I used to sit there Don would be watching it, and I'd have my Booker magazine, and then gradually lower it, you know, till uh -huh. I, then finally I got interested in it. Good. And now I look forward to it. Good. Because there's an active and busy season all from here on in. Yes, I don't watch hockey, but I like the, uh, I like the baseball. Good. But I'm glad to have uh, that interest. And you uh, you have a nice friendship with Jan's mother, too, I understand. Oh, yes. Yeah, she's good to me. She takes me shopping and we go to shows or else we go half on a video. Oh, do you? Yes. Nice it's idea. What have you seen years. lately? Anything good? We saw a twister. Did you? It was good. Wow. And we saw, um, oh, Birdcage, I think it was. Did you? That was funny. Do you go on Tuesday night, the seniors' night, or we, the? F we uh, get that price every night. Oh, so twenty-five for any night. You can go any time you feel like it. Anybody else, otherwise, and seniors have to yes. pay for twenty-five. Oh, good. Yeah. Tell me, Grace. Uh, there was a fabulous movie that I saw this winter called Dead Man Walking. I've heard of that. Did you didn't see that, eh? No. It was on in Milton for about a week. We Just saw grumpy old man. I love. You know, Jack Lemon and the Walter Mathaw. Really? You know, funny. Yes. And yes. Father of the Bride, that was good. good. Oh, what have you seen good. on the video lately? Anything? Anything? Well, that was Grumpier Old Men. I That's see. The one we saw in the video. Good. And, uh, good. So, between the baseball and my books, and, and I do show craft drugs, I just finished one. Oh, lovely. I don't know who it'll be for, but. You've done it. <laughs> Three teddy bears. Oh, sounds like it's for a little baby somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, so it's Good. a hobby. Made each one for each grandchild and the kids, you know, wow. as they got married. Good. Good. So, uh, but I never liked sewing, but I, Pat started me on the show craft. Good. It was an owl for the door. When I was done that, I just thought, well, I'd like to do another one, so then I kept on hooked on it. <laughs> hooked on hooking, so to yeah, speak. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Now yeah. tell me this: here you come, nearly eighty, which is amazing. Have you any? Uh, do you have any a wish list? Do you have anything uh, special that you'd like to see or do upcoming? You wish for this or wish for that? Any special experience? Anything to travel anywhere? Do oh, any I wish I had. Uh, I wish I had seen Pompeii and the pyramids. 
Really, Grace? Isn't that uh, strange? Anything of either one. That's why I have Egyptian stuff all over. Yes. I think in one lifetime I was an Egyptian? in each place. Mm. You know what, Grace? I gave Karen a couple of birthdays ago a beautiful book uh, called The Angel, because Karen's very interested in angels mm -hmm. too, right? Mm -hmm. This book has got, it's called The Angels of Pompeii, and it's uh, got pictures. I think Pat gave me that. Really? Is it like this? I don't Quite know. A good size book. I don't know. I think it's rather smaller than that. Because Pat's given me books quite a few books on Pompeii with pictures and really uh, yes and uh, Karen made me that little box behind you did she yes it has figures on it and everything well and Pat keeps me supplied with books on Pompeii and then anything about the pyramids you know on the Discovery Channel and uh -huh. you know, on, uh, those channels, they often have the pyramids, anything about them, anything Egyptian I'm interested in. Have you, have, do you remember that, having that interest most of your life, or do you remember when it was awakened? Uh, Pompeii, uh, I remember in Preston, I'd be in my 30s and I remember telling somebody, oh, how I'd like to go to Pompeii. Oh, and uh, Pat's son that uh, flies all around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, he got me stones from there. Really? He, he was there and he got me, uh, picked up stones. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I thought that was great. I have them in my little box there. And what, what about Egypt? When did your interest awaken in Egypt? Around the same time? Yes. Both, both at once, mm -hmm. eh? And Your Pat got me a video that takes you back in time on Egypt. Yes. I played it several times. Did you uh, have any special experience which awakened your interest, Grace, or how did no, that... No, I don't know. It just seems to be more or less familiar. Yes, yes. And I think I see on uh -huh. TV about either place. Uh-huh. Well, now you I say... I like to be hypnotized. You and, know? and go back in time? Yes. <coughs> well, you know what? You don't really even have to be hypnotized for that. You can do that. Uh, we could do that, you and I. It's just a matter of getting relaxed and having um, having uh, a guided kind of an imagery. Want to? Not. We wouldn't do it here on this tape. But I mean, would you like to to uh, just have a little experience of that? Sometime I would. When uh, Pat's here with a tape recorder to record it. Uh -huh. She had that done once by Hans Holzer, you've heard of him. Oh, this would be a real uh, and hypnotized regression? Yes, and uh, and she has a tape of, and here's her voice. Uh -huh. And uh, you know how the girl is always like going over to England? Yes. Well, uh, this was, she lived in England, who knows how many hundreds of years ago, and he asked her, you know, different questions, and the, and the uh, the currency then, yes, and she could tell it, uh -huh. and then out of the, out of the spell or whatever you call it, yes. she didn't know, you know. It's sure. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Mm. Well, if you want to, we could, I'll come over some other evening, and we can just sit and quietly. Uh, I'll kind of help you relax and guide you towards that, but I don't know that you'd expect to speak. It wouldn't be the same as a hypnotized regression, but it would be a little introduction. But you know what I wanted to say, Grace? You could still go to Pompeii and to Egypt. No. It's no big deal. No, not now with my health, and, and that's why I haven't even gone back to California. Really? No, I don't think I'd up to it. You don't? Much as I'd like to. Okay. Well, please ask Karen if uh, she'd show you that book about the angels of Pompeii. Yes, I will. I definitely because will. Because it was very pretty. Uh -huh. It caught my eye because Amy, my youngest daughter, had just been to Pompeii. Where is she? And then I saw it, and I was very much attracted to it. Uh -huh. So
so uh, see if if what she shows you is what you have or if there's a little something new on Pompeii and then Egypt you know I've been to Egypt I think I heard that or yes and uh, is it what the, did you think of the pyramids well you know what I was when I got to Egypt I was I was there for two weeks we, we were around uh, the pyramids in that territory and then we were also up or down the Nile River on a boat and stopped oh, at all the goodness. ancient temples. Oh, my. But I was in, I guess in a trance of some sort, I was speechless the whole time I was there. I, I did, virtually didn't speak. I just walked around in silence. Mm -hmm. And so, I saw everything and I know it, it made its mark, but I have very little conscious uh, uh, impression, so to speak. I have very little intellectual information about it mm -hmm. because what I was getting, I wasn't getting on the, on the everyday level. I was getting on some deeper level. I just walked around in silence and oh, soaked it all up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in terms of the pyramids, uh, actually, we, we went inside one of the pyramids well, that would be something. and had a meditation in there and even got inside a, sar inside a sarcophagus. Really? If you can imagine that. No, I can't. But the, the one thing, actually the, only, the main thing that stands out in my mind about that area was we walked towards the pyramids one evening just as soon as we got there and I had the experience of the Sphinx smiling at me. It's really it's if you can imagine that the Sphinx smiled at me and almost like welcomed me uh -huh. and that was the only uh, really conscious awareness I had. That's but so interesting. The thing I do remember about the coming along the Nile River in the boat, stopping at all the various temples was coming along the river, it's just the same as it might have been two thousand really? or more years ago. Well it shows it in that video uh -huh. the Nile that Pat got me. I played it several times and Good. It's uh Good. They're nostalgic, you know. And you feel very comfortable and familiar with it. Yes. Yes, I'm Another sure. Another place I think would be interesting, although I'm sure I never uh, was there, but uh, rather interesting, is uh, up in the Andes, you know, the... Machu Picchu? Yes. In, per yes. in Peru? Yes. Yes. Uh, Shirley MacLaine, there was a show I saw years ago with her in it. And she went there yes. and, uh, and filmed it. I forget the name of the show. Uh huh. Just to be somewhere so where people have lived thousands of years ago, you know. Yes. Well, you know what, though? They lived thousands of years ago right here. Yes, that's right. The native people did. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to Crawford Lake? Oh, I love it there. Pat never has been. Really? June. Uh, Jan and Alan took me about a year after my cancer operation. We walked all the way around. Good, good. Would uh, do they have they chosen not to go, or they had just not gotten around to it they yet? They didn't know about it till I told oh, them. Oh, I see. Uh, you know the way everybody's busy nowadays and never got around to it. And uh -huh. I think they'll take the people from Scotland. They're coming to visit them. They come. Oh. And they stay with them and then they come over here. Yes. And they're fascinated with anything Indian, they're going to take them there. Oh, that's a splendid spot to take them. And uh, they took them last time up to Midland, is it? Uh, yes. St. Marie amongst the Hurons, mm -hmm. that's also beautiful. Oh, how good. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I'm going to invite you right now, Friday evening this week, um, in conjunction with, which will be the 21st of June, this day of the summer solstice, um, we're having a, a healing circle ceremony 
up at Andrew Scenic Acres on the number 10 side road just north of us. Oh, where Jan gets her strawberries. Exactly. Uh -huh. We're going up there at 7 o'clock in the evening. Men, women, and children of Milton are invited. And we're having a, a ceremony because a certain native man of the Lakota, Nakota, and Dakota nation has put out a call for a world day of prayer for global healing. Oh, that's interesting. And that's this Friday evening. Uh -huh. Now, would you be interested or able to, wanting to come to that on Friday night? If well, you could, I'd love for you to come. Well, that sounds, uh, I'll have to, uh, I'll tell Jan. Yes. And uh, think, it over. think it over. I'll tell yeah. her that I invited you. Yes. And closer to the day, mm -hmm. you can talk it over and see uh, if you'd like to come. Yeah. We just have a certain small native ritual. We do a smudge ceremony to cleanse our auras and mm -hmm. to pray in the native way for, for uh, global healing and to honor Mother Earth. I should tell Pat that. Do. I guess Jan told you about Pat's yes. operation. That's a worry and to you, uh, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That was the other shock. How is she doing, Grace? She seems to be doing very well. Good. She gets tired easily, but that's, you know, to be expected. She's yes. Staying. But the prayers are going up, and <laughs> yes. that always helps. And uh, Of course. Yes. Good. Do the girls have a strong faith? Oh, yes. They Definitely. do. Good. They do. I'm glad. Yes. Yes. And yes. That's the books you, that I showed you, you know. Yes. All about and miracles and yes. faith. Oh, yes. And uh, Pat's rather psychic, you know. Is she? Yes. Good. And when she has time, she meditates and, mm -hmm. and uh, she's more or less psychic. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think she could be a channeler, she thinks, you know. Really? But she is kind of up on everything like that. Maybe she'll devote herself to it sometime could yet. Could be. Time will tell, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Definitely, yes. time will tell. So you don't actually have a wish list for yourself at this point then, eh? No, I'm... I can't think of... Like I say, apart from seeing, I wish I had gone, you know. I wish I'd even gone to England the first time the girls asked me. Now I'd never have be able to keep up with them. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm quite content here. And the family around. And Good. Good. There's nothing I think that I can wish for except better health for us all. Good. You know. It makes such a difference, doesn't it? Oh, yes. I was telling Pat, that's number one above everything else. Well, I always did say that. Yes. Because that means more than than money or anything, you know. Yes, it does. Because how can you enjoy a holiday or anything if you're in poor health? You can't. Not at all. I'm in pretty good health. Good. I never know what bothers me and what doesn't. I think was it this, was it that? Or <laughs> <laughs> I uh, see, I see. But anyway, well, I'm lucky they're all good to me. Indeed. Very good. But uh, because you've been so good to them and continue to be, I know that to be the case. So that's the beauty of it. It goes round and round, doesn't it? Yes, it does. That's that yes. song, Love is something if you give it away give it away do you know that song i've heard give it, it away uh -huh. and that's what you've done and therefore you get plenty back yes i sure do it's good it's good well now we're almost finished i think is there anything special that we haven't touched on that you'd like to add before we close i had no idea what this would be like or i would have written things down, I guess, but uh, you've been easy to talk to and it's been nice. Well, I've certainly enjoyed it, I'll tell you I that. Too, Elizabeth. Anything, though, that you'd like to add that comes to you at this point? Because I wouldn't want to finish before you were finished. 
No, all I can say is that I'm lucky that I have such a loving family. That's, and I just pray for good health for each and every one of them. Good. Good. And Jan's good. been a good daughter-in-law, you know. I yes. Mean, anybody that marries your only son. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> of whom you are dearly fond. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe spoiled like the rest of them, but I mean, she's been very good to me too. Mm -hmm. Everybody has. Good. You know. Well, you deserve it, my dear. And I don't know. Tell me, get what I want. And good. They're all very good. Good. So I'm good. lucky. I'm very lucky. Blessings heaped upon you. That's right. Good, good. Well, then I guess we'll close, and I'll just close by wishing you a happy 80th birthday. Thank you. And thank you so much for having this conversation with me. It's been a pleasure. And thanks for giving me the opportunity of telling all my family how much I love them. Oh, that's and always well. Sweet, and I'll Grace. I'll always be around them. Good. Yes, you will. Mm -hmm. You'll be their angel someday, yes, won't you? That's right. Guardian angel, you're the guardian angel here on earth. Mm -hmm. And on the spirit form, you'll be around when that day comes. Yeah. So there's actually nothing to be uh, too concerned about, is there? No, no, there isn't. No. Lovely. Well, happy birthday, and God bless you. Bye.